The Share Center 2-Bay Network Storage Device, or the DNS320, allows everyone on your network to back up and share their documents, music, photos, and videos to a central location and access them remotely over the internet. It features a built-in web file and FTP server, as well as an iTunes server, a USB printer server port, and much more. We're going to show you how to get started using the DNS320, but first, let's see what comes in the box. After opening up the box and removing some of the packaging, the first thing that you'll find is the DNS320, followed by a blue Ethernet cable, the first part of the power adapter, the second part of the power adapter, and lastly, the installation guide and installation CD. Now you'll want to remove the protective film around the DNS320 that keeps the device nice and shiny. Let's take a closer look at the device, shall we? On the front, open the small latch and you'll find a USB port, a USB copy and unmount button, and of course the power button. Flip the device around and up top you have the cover lock, down on the bottom the power plug, a tiny reset button, and a screaming fast gigabit ethernet port. Open the cover using the cover latch and let's install two hard drives. Start with the SATA and power connections pointed down and match them up with the connections in the device. The hard drives will slide right in and you'll feel a slight resistance as you make the connection. The key word is slight, don't force them in. Slide the cover back on and now we'll connect the NAS to our home network. Plug the provided ethernet cable to an open LAN port on the back of your router and connect it to the ethernet port on the NAS. Plug the power into a wall outlet and connect it to the DNS320. Press the power button and now we'll configure the NAS using a computer. Start by inserting the installation CD into your computer and follow the prompts to run the application. When prompted, click on the large install button to start the configuration process. Be sure to read through the end user license agreement. It's a pretty good read. And if you agree, click so to continue. Select your language and then skip past the prompt to set up your device because these are the same steps we just took you through. But once you're prompted to select your device, select it and then click next. Leave the password field blank as the default and you'll be prompted to create a new password for your NAS. Most likely you'll want to stick with DHCP as it's the most common and easiest configuration. Then feel free to customize your device name or leave the defaults. You can also enable Dynamic DNS or DDNS to give your device even more flexibility, but we'll skip this for today, but be sure to check out our other videos on how to set up DDNS. Set your time zone and time, and just to make it easier, you can use your computer time with a single click. Another optional feature are email alerts. If you want, configure your email settings, but we'll skip this for now. Since the drives are new, you'll have to select how you want your NAS to be set up. Choose Standard to create two separate volumes, one for each drive. Choose JBOD, or just a bunch of drives. This creates one large drive out of two drives. RAID 0 is similar to JBOD, as it creates one large drive, but has better performance, and it is a type of RAID configuration. And the last option, RAID 1, which is used for maximum data protection, one drive is used to mirror or duplicate the other. We'll select RAID 1. Assign a drive letter for easy access to the NAS, and then scan through your settings to make sure they're correct. You'll be warned that all the data currently on the drives will be erased. As long as you understand this, click Yes to continue. Formatting the drives will take a few minutes, especially depending on the size of your drives. So sit back, grab a coffee, soda, or another tasty beverage, and give it a few minutes to finish. And once you see Format Successful, click Next and then Finish. You're all done. Click on My Computer and you'll see the new Drive Z, or any other drive letter that you selected during configuration, and now you can copy your photos, music, videos, or documents for streaming to your BoxyBox or just for the assurance of having an extra backup. Setting up your ShareCenter 2-Bay Network Storage device is simple and easy to do. D-Link also offers the DNS320 pre-configured with 1TB of storage to make it even easier. The RAID 1 configuration gives you that extra backup to make sure that your documents and files are safe and secure. And lastly, be sure to check out our other videos to learn how to get more out of your D-Link devices.